babe. We're mm-hmm. making we're making several several trips. We don't have to. Okay. Trip, don't make two trips. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, well, making coffee, of course. Oh my, is it true that you travel with an espresso maker? Yes. <laughs> Guilty yes, as charged, and there is nothing wrong with that. I actually moved the hotel coffee maker into the closet so that my Nespresso had a place, a place, a place to be, a place to be, <laughs> and it's perfect. So this is the process that we go through for hair and makeup for our student Katya. Um, I forgot to set up the camera for her hair because all of my stuff was in the car. Um, And then look, I've brought Coco in for moral support and Katya seemed to be a huge fan of that. So maybe next time we will make this happen for her again. We actually tried several looks for Katya during the week because she danced three different days. This look was a bit more severe, um, more intense of a look. So I slicked the sides of her hair back, was more dramatic with the top, brought it up a little bit higher, and went darker with her eye color. This was actually one of my favorite looks that we did for Katya. I've done her hair and makeup several times throughout the years, and this is one of my favorites. And yes, the secret behind Brandon's and Coco's look is me, of course. (laughs) So cute. Moving on to my look, typically I would be pulling it up doing this extravagant bun, but this year because of wanting something different, I am going with a shorter bob, the white blonde look, and I'm leaving it down. So I'm straightening it out and this way when I dance, it's a lot freer and when I come home, it's a lot easier to maintain. So I'm really excited to see how this looks on the dance floor. Um... I I have a feeling that it's going to look fantastic. It's really, the color is just going to pop on the floor. And the look is a lot different than the other competitors that are out there. Everyone typically pulls their hair up and back. And I'm wanting to stand out. I like to do something different. I like to go against the grain. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out, um, how I feel about it afterwards, because doing my hair is my hair and makeup actually is very therapeutic for me when I'm getting ready for competition. So we'll see. I'm going to give kind of like a review of how I feel about it later on, but I, I have a feeling, I have a distinct feeling. I'm going to love it. Stay high, good guys. Stay high. You good? You're with mommy and daddy? Yes? Yes? All right, moving into makeup. You are going to see me in um, my normal self. I start here at this mirror. I end up moving to like three different mirrors. I don't know about anybody else, but I cannot do my makeup in one mirror. I don't know why. Maybe it's a bad habit that I need to break, but I, I just like... There's different lighting, there's different views, so I like to change it up. Um, So right now, I put a uh, primer on prior to doing all of this. I didn't used to do primer, but now as I'm like aging, I just need the primer to kind of smooth everything out. And then I do bare minerals for my base, so for my foundation and for the powders and stuff that I use. Actually, the primer that I use as well is bare minerals. And I've, for for whatever reason, using those products have eliminated me breaking out after competitions because I had to put layer upon layer upon layer on. So the bare minerals has been helping me with that onto the next mirror especially for the bronzer (laughs) because this is like super dark so I needed like brighter light to see it so this is bare minerals as well and I've started to a girlfriend of mine um I asked her because her makeup always looks freaking amazing I asked her how do you get this to how do you get your makeup makeup to look so flawless and she was like layer 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 so I just recently started to try and get better at layering it. For me, I'm not so much of a precision gal. I'm more of like a go with the flow gal. (laughs) So um, a lot of the ballroom dance makeup and hair is very um, striking and very precise. And for me, I just don't do well with that kind of stuff. I like to kind of make it a little bit 
softer or a little bit more natural. So um, it's just taken me time to kind of apply some of like the newer versions of going through the makeup process and um, making them a little bit more precise than I'm used to. As for where I put the bronzer, it's right underneath my chin, right on, right into my jawline. Um, I try to smooth it out so it doesn't look so crazy. I put it on top of my forehead, and then you'll see later on I put it right next to my eye, and I try to brush it up so that I have a more um, lifted look. And then I'll also put a little bit onto my eyelid where I'll be putting darker makeup anyway so that it has like a little bit of a baseline of the dark. All right, moving on to the eyebrows. Um, I keep changing my mind on how I do eyebrows. I used to use an eyebrow pencil to be more precise, and then I switched to powder. I actually like using, I, I literally just use a darker powder in the um, eyeshadow palette. And I start from the corner on the inside, and I move it out and up. And then I'll try to fill in the top of my arch as well. But I try to get that bottom line going first, naturally. And then um, my, like right at the arch, for me personally, I'm just starting to like lose hair there. And so I just have to kind of like fill it up and out to create that arch. It, it Like it's a hit or miss for me every single time. It's so frustrating. So see, I'm like turning my head to make sure that I can see the arch and make sure that it looks natural but I'll go back in underneath and make that line more prominent. I would not do this much for an everyday look but for competitions with all of the lighting it, it's better to do darker and then kind of like smooth it out. Um, I used to actually do darker than this prior but I actually like the softer the softness um, of using the powder and then kind of like brushing it up and through and into a third mirror <laughs> so this is a lot brighter and it's more natural lighting and I'm coming in here to get underneath the eyebrows so after I've gone through and colored my eyebrows in I take the lightest shade in my palette Brandon is so ridiculous oh my gosh <laughs> I take the lightest shade in my palette and I just draw it right underneath the eyebrow for the inside of the eyebrow I do a very thin line and then as it goes out towards the outer edge of my eyebrow, I start to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll put some um, eyeshadow that's it's brighter. It's the lightest one I have, but it has a little bit more glitter. And that's what I'll use on the outside of my eyebrow. With that lighter shade that has a little bit of glitter on it, I typically will go through and do like little highlights. Like right above my lip, right at the tip of my nose along the line of my nose and a little bit on my chin. Um, I'll also put it on my forehead and then out to the tops of my cheekbones and maybe sometimes I'll put it above my eyebrow. I'm kind of like, I'm like loving the highlight. I love using highlight and I just keep going in for more and more and more. <laughs> I like, maybe it's a disease. I like can't stop myself. I love it so much. And here I am coming in with that highlighter. I've already put some on, but I just, I cannot stop myself. I love it so much. I love it so much. I think especially with when my hair is lighter and then especially when it's blonde, I just love the way that it looks. And on the floor, it pops. Like when the lights are hitting you, I love the way that it looks. All right, so now moving on to doing the eyes. I always start with a lighter color. I know that a lot of people like to go in with like, a primer or something like that every time I use primer I mean no offense to anybody else it works for them I don't know how they make it work for me personally it just does not work so I just continue to go on with my makeup I don't put extra primer on or anything I start with a lighter color first I get really really light in the corner of my eyes and then also right underneath my eyebrow on the outside of it and then I start to go in with a little bit more of a precise brush and I start to do almost like a an eyeliner. So I start with an eyeliner and then I start to go up into the crease of my eye so that these are the darkest spots 
on my eye. I was originally going to go with a more drastic, like clearly dark on the out, outer edge of my eye and clearly light on the inner edge. And then I just started to like the way that the dark was looking and I just went with it. So I just started, like you can see, like it, it's a little bit lighter on the inside of my eye. Um, and you'll see like as we move out and, and finish out the look, I go actually with like a... Not a, it's kind of like a lighter smoky eye is what I end up going with. What I've learned to start doing more instead of like trying to make it so drastic of a color because I would get stuck there. I try to use transitional colors. So if it's going on pretty dark, I try to go like two or three shades up higher. So a little less dark and start to blend it and then this is where I started to realize that I kind of liked the smokier look I still have a like a lighter look on the inner edge of my eye so I still keep that but I start to make it a little bit darker um I bring that darker the darkest color and I bring it down underneath my eye as well and then same thing for underneath the eye once I have that darker color underneath, I take the lighter shades and try to blend it down and out. Now I'm going back in with a lighter color to kind of just like highlight that again. Um, because it was starting to get a little too dark for my taste. I like My eyes are already dark, so I like to bring in some lightness in there. So I'm just hitting that real fast before I continue. Last thing, or at least one of the last things that I do is I go in with a pencil eyeliner. I This is another thing kind of like the um, eyebrows. I, I go back and forth between like a liquid, something that I put on with a brush, and then lately I've been really favoring the just old-fashioned pencils, and then I do like a little bit of like a smudge. I used to do the cat eye. I do like a baby cat eye. It's very baby. I don't know why it just doesn't. I think it's because my eyes are hooded. So I have hooded eyes. And typically when I do the cat eye, a severe one or a dramatic one, it just doesn't look great on my eyes. So I try to do um, just like a baby one and um, then kind of smudge it out and then press on the eyelashes from there. eyelash time so I remember the first couple of times that I started doing eyelashes and it felt so bizarre it felt like a freaking spider on my face um and then you know enter Brandon being sweet saying he loves me and he's gonna go downstairs <laughs> and get Katya warmed up while I finish this up but back to the eyelashes um I think it's good that I didn't I think I was like 18 <laughs> when I tried eyelashes for the very first time um, so it actually helped me in helping my students when I started to put eyelashes on them and they had never done it either. I was able to explain to them, you know, it's an odd sensation. It feels bizarre. It feels ridiculous, especially when you look in the mirror and you're like, ah, who's that? Um, but I'm sure you guys know, like as you start to wear them, especially your first couple of times, you start to forget that they're even there and it starts to be just become part of the look and it's actually not as bad as it feels when you first put them on. A couple of the hacks that I've learned over time with the eyelashes is cutting them to size, which I didn't used to do. I used to just use them as is. Um, cutting them to size, like other people said to, is actually a good idea, so I'm glad I started doing that. Um, another thing that I started doing was when you put the glue on, let it dry. So a lot of people will try to put the glue on and then just try to slap it onto their face right away. It will never stick for you and it'll always be a pain. So what I do is I let it dry and then you'll see me working it here. So the seam of it can be really stiff. And so then when you put it on your eye, it just kind of like the corners always pop forward because they just won't stay because of how stiff they are. So when the glue is drying, I'll actually like wiggle, wiggle it forward and backwards in and in like making sure that it's in a circular um, form to get it a little bit more flexible so that it, when I do go to put it on my eye, it's a lot easier. 
Last but not least, the lips. So I started using a darker shade for the lip liner so that I could have a darker outer edge. I think I have, I don't think I use it in this one, but typically what I'll do is I'll have like a darker lipstick that I use around the outer edge along the lip liner. And then for the inner part of the lips, I'll use a lighter shade of red on the inside of it to give it dimension. I think that I need to go a little bit more drastic to be honest with you to get that like light to dark look. Um, but I'm just now starting to experiment with that. Okay, yes, I did do I did do that. So I have a darker lipstick that kind of matches the color of the lip liner and then I'll be going in. So I, I do the corners and a little bit of the edge and then I'll be coming back in and hitting it with that lighter red, almost like a pink color. I go in with a brush on top to kind of smooth everything out. Um, this is kind of like a new thing that I've started to try and do to see if I can get into the creases and everything. I've tried the lip stains and everything. The lip stains are fine. Sometimes they look a little sketchy towards the end of the night. So I have yet to find a lip stain that I enjoy. So if you guys have any that you recommend, definitely let me know and I'll try them out. So this is a last minute spritz of the hairspray. I'm trying to go lighter so that my hair actually moves because that's what I'm really going for but it's hard for me to like not hairspray for competition it feels really weird Your voice can be heard. I, like I love the local retail discounts I'm nowhere near ready to retire. look of the day with my hot slippers <laughs> I got hair and makeup done I did some video for you guys because you asked for it um did Katya's hair and makeup, did Brandon's hair, Tanner, all of the stuff is ready. They're already downstairs, um, probably dancing their first, no, they don't dance until 11. So I'm headed down now and it is the first day of rhythm. So let's go. Favorite part of the hotel so far is these windows. They're huge. Bam. The lighting is phenomenal to do your makeup. <laughs> Like it was so nice because the mirror's on the opposite wall. And so it made it so easy to go in and do all the detailed stuff. You don't get that every time, but I'm going to enjoy it this time. All right. So this is Pro-Am. So it's a professional dancer, which is Brandon. And then the amateur dancer, which is Katya. And she is dancing what is called American Rhythm right now. She's doing a closed division, which means that they are set patterns. And she's competing in her age bracket which means that she is competing against others at her level and age. Katia also dances with me on the competition floor. Now this is a different division. This is to showcase that she can dance on her own and knows how to move her body. This is a proficiency, so what that means is she's just competing for a score, not against another competitor. What is it, day three? Yeah, and this is what we look like in reverse. What? We're mirrored. Why are you so weird? <laughs> okay, tell them that saying that you always say before we compete for power and strength. Ready, go. Go. <laughs> Take three. All right, tell them that joke. I don't you know. know what you're talking about. <laughs> like you, no. What are you saying? Chelsea has this one joke that she always tells right before we go on the floor to make us relax and smile, and it goes something like this. It's like knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> go go shut up. <laughs> Is there an end to this joke? No. It's Actually, just... none of that's true. I was just hoping something organic would happen. I bet you no one believed that that was true <laughs> at all. Foxtrot, 8 to 11. First to Kati and Brandon. First to Skylar and Errol. Second to Jill and Mayo. And first to Angelica and Alexander. 2-1-2, two, two, the Viennese. Okay. Okay. You said 3-2-1. Two, two, one. One. 
doing this has been a leap of faith because the judges here on this side of the pond have not seen this before so it's a little bit different and I have to explain it sometimes when we go to competition but the benefits for Katia doing this has been amazing she feels more confident she's learning how to move her body without needing Brandon to be there with her I'll have to do an interview so you can hear her side of it first to Nadia and Fabio first to Neil and Kimberly first to Moving on to the next day, this is closed smooth. This is American smooth, so these are the traditional dances like the waltz, the tango, the foxtrot, and instead of staying on one spot of the floor, you're traveling around the floor, so getting the floor craft for these is key, and Katia is really excited to start working on smooth for this year. We have to know the backstory of what happened. Of the dip? Yes. <laughs> okay, so the movement is called the falling angel. You don't have to go through it, just okay, do your I movement. Know. I just I catch her behind the shoulders and then we spin her around and then we dip. And, and then they go, I go <laughs> Yeah. So Katya for some reason we added one rotation and then a second rotation happened and then I'm pretty sure a third rotation. A third happened. rotation and you finally like let's just dip. Let's let's just like, let's just dip finally. <laughs> After like 300 <laughs> turns. I was like, I don't know what's happening. So <laughs> then possibly. I said, wait, so then I said, Do, were you guys actually communicating on the dance floor? <laughs> well, you possibly caught this on video, so we might be able I to insert it. I think it is on video. I <laughs> glimpsed, it had a little glimpse of it. I'm like, oh, that's the one <laughs> that's where the I keep like twirling around his hand and it's something has, it has to happen. It has to happen at some point. Why am I not dipping? <laughs> Brandon's communicating on the dance floor. He's like, let's just dip. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 